So we're going to see how to solve a separable ordinary differential equation. Uh, these are first order nonlinear differential equations. So notice it is first order, first derivative of y. It is nonlinear, so we have a y squared. And the heart of the method in the first step is to move things around algebraically and try to get y prime and all the y's on one side and then all the x's on the other side. And I typically just put all the y stuff on the left and x on the right. So if we were to, since we have this x times y prime term there, um, we actually need to bring the y's over to the right temporarily. So we're going to subtract y squared and subtract y and then, from both sides. Yeah, and then divide by y prime? No, then we'll divide by x, right? Well, you get x by itself, yeah. So this is all zero, right? y squared minus y squared, y minus y. And the left, we get the negative y squared minus y. Now we can divide by x and then divide by the y's, and that will make them switch places. So x prime. Dividing by x on both sides. And on the left, x divided by x is 1, so that just leaves you with the y prime. And on the right, I want to factor off a negative so that it looks nicer, I guess. All right. We want to have one over x, essentially. Yeah. Because if you were to do it the other way, it'd get x by itself. It would, it would just be x by itself. Right. So we're now going to do our last maneuver, and that's to divide both sides by this y squared plus y. And on the right hand side, the y squared plus y divided by y squared plus y is just 1. So we should have the y's gone from the right side and things officially separated. Now the instructions say put y and y prime on the left side and x on the right. But now depending on the order we're given the equation, that's not necessarily true. Essentially, just to specify that direction, we just have to get x over 1 equals this, or, or is it more, more specifically, do we have to have y prime in the numerator? Or does no. Yeah, in every situation, we're going to look at y prime will be in the numerator. Uh, the y's and the x's could be a numerator or denominator. The important thing is that they're separated. You could have x's on the left and y's on the right, but it's just nice to have some uniformity. So what yeah. Is, what I'm saying is the expression x equals like we divided by y prime. Why would that be a why why, why wouldn't we do that? Right. Uh, that's a good point. So if you're just looking at this second step. You could have them things separated by just dividing by y prime there. Mm -hmm. But we'd get x as opposed to negative 1 over x. You would have x. The thing is, having that y prime in the denominator would make it so the integration. Can't integration. Oh, 
why. Right. That's why. Okay, so we want to we want to have it equal to one over x. So yeah, so y you, prime you don't want y prime in the denominator, right? All right, so let's take a look at integrating both sides here. So the right-hand side is pretty straightforward. The integral of 1 over x is negative natural log of x. The left-hand side is not so obvious. Remember that the y prime is dy dx, so y prime times dx is just dy. Right, but unless you're very, very clever, the u substitution here that can be done is not that obvious. So what might be more obvious is the fact that you can use partial fraction decomposition. So y, y plus one. Right, so just as a side problem, trying to get this into something that can be integrated Right. Oh, you have another way. You have a third way? Yeah, it's more obvious, but it's just take one or two more steps. Let's look at that afterwards. Yeah. So with partial fraction decomposition, you want to fully factor the denominator and then separate the rational expression into a sum of rational expressions each one having one of those factors as a denominator. So here we have y and y plus 1 as the factors in the denominator. So we're going to have a y1 expression and y plus 1 for the other. And the numerators are unknown constants that you would then determine. So you can determine these a couple different ways, but uh, we're just going to multiply by the common denominator and then combine like terms or match up like terms. So just taking this equation, if we were to multiply everything by y, what would happen? We get that, right? And then the y's will, y's that are there, will cancel. And the y's with a will cancel. Then also multiplying everything by y plus 1, And we'll see that the y plus 1's will cancel with the term on the left and the far right. So when the dust settles, you just have a times y plus 1 and b times y. Distributing is just ay plus a. And this has to hold for all values of y. Because of that, the constants have to be matched up. So this actually leads you to the conclusion that the constants, 1 and a, have to be equal. Right? Two constant terms have to be matched up. So a is 1. 
The variable terms also have to be matched up. And there's no variable terms on the left. Uh, but on the right, we have ay plus by. So ay plus by are going to add to 0. That means a and b are opposites. So a was 1, I'm sorry? Yep. So b is negative 1. Is that an initial condition that A was 1? No, just something we figured out. It's a solving a system of, a differ, of linear equations. OK, well, what was the, two, so the first equation was 1 equals AY plus A plus BY. And the second equation was? Um, so this is, there's only one equation, but it leads to a system of equations. Because you have to have the constants be equal to each other. And that leads you to say that 1 has to equal a. And then you have to have the variable terms equal to each other. And that tells you 0 equals ay plus b. So this is the system of equations that you get. So a and b or just? Just the first, the first constant has to equal 1. Is that what you're saying? Right. A is 1. So that gives you one of your solutions. And since you can just divide through by y here, this tells you that a plus b is 0, which implies that b is negative 1. So all that was a fancy way of going back to this decomposition and saying, oh, this is just 1 over y minus 1 over y plus 1. Okay. So how is this going to look with integration? Well. Think of it as two separate integrals. And we just did the 1 over x integral. This works out the same way, right? Integral of 1 over y dy is natural log of y. What about the other one? It's natural log of y plus 1. Uh, right, minus natural log of y plus 1. And the reason we're allowed to do that is because technically you can do a u substitution and say, oh, well, u is y plus 1, but then du is still just 1. It's still just dy. So uh, yeah, if it's not obvious, that, that constant doesn't, doesn't affect it because we can do u substitution. Yeah? If we did have uh, three factors, we only had, we had x and we had x plus 1, but if we had maybe factor trinomial and we had x, x, x plus 2, x minus 2, and we had a c constant, if we had like all constants essentially are set to one, I guess is my question. In this case, we only had a. We only had one constant. Right. So you could certainly get a more complicated system here, and you could have a and b both in this equation, and then you would have to solve for a and b. But it's the rule that all constants are set to one. But it's c, it's, e, d. I mean, if it's by itself, essentially, we're going to set it to one. They're going to add up to one. Okay. They're not all set to one, but they would all add up to one. We just happen to only have one of them, so there's not a whole lot to add up. Well, the other ones are variables, not constants. So but I mean, if, if, like if there was a b here, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Then you'd have to have a plus b here. Okay. Yeah. So, gotcha. Yeah. So you're trying to take all the terms that are constants on one side or on the other and set them equal to each other. We just don't have a lot. There's only there's an a on one side and a one on the other, so they have to be the same number. This might not look like we can solve for y, but we can, can't we? Wouldn't it convert down to the ln of y over y plus 1? Yes. Then you could raise both. Right, so properties of logarithms allow you to combine those two logarithms, right? 
And so um, natural log of a, or the difference of natural logs is the natural log of the quotient, like that. So we can actually put a fraction in there, and it's y over y, like that. Um, and then the left side is still the same. All right, now how do we get rid of the natural log? All right, so raising both sides, yeah, to making both sides the exponent to base e, we would get y over y plus 1 e to the negative ln. So Do you remember how that works? 1, 2, just go ahead and move. Treat it as a negative 1 and move it to the inside as ln of x to the power of negative 1. It would be a so you can make it constant. you can make it 1 over e to the natural log of x and then the e and the natural log cancel. Um, or you can make the negative go up as an exponent. Either way, it's going to be x to the negative so 1. So that's equivalent to, e to uh, negative, e to the negative e times x to the c? So I think the way we did it last time is the simplest way to think about it. And that was to just put it in the bottom of a fraction. back to making this a little bigger. So taking this negative exponent and saying, oh, e to the negative natural log of x, that's the same as 1 over e to the positive natural log of x. Then you can allow those to cancel. I believe that's what yeah. you all may seem to make more sense than to use that property where that negative goes up as an exponent. Either way, you're going to get x to the negative 1. Well, this still doesn't seem like we can solve for y now, does it? So we still have some work to do. You can leave the c in the numerator, I'm sorry. Yes, so what we did there was... It's not e to the c, it would just be c. Right, e to the c is renamed c. Yeah. Because it's a constant. Yeah. That's, we had this combo saying yeah. plus plus i right now, so this is a constant. Yeah. Gotcha. All right, so this ends up being c over x. And now to solve for y, you can you can cross multiply, but I don't think that's helpful. I think you just want to multiply by the denominator. This is a trick that you technically could learn pretty early on in algebra, but it throws a lot of people off. I'm going to multiply both sides by y plus 1. Right? Just multiply both sides by y plus 1. On the left, you're just going to have y now. Right? Let me go ahead and distribute this, C. So it'll be CY plus C. Let me write that as C over X times Y plus C over X. Just splitting up the uh, fraction. Makes more sense going the other way, right? Two fractions of common denominator, you can bring them together. Now we can subtract that over, factor the y, and divide.
So subtracting that other y term over so we can combine those y's. I mean, the problem was if you want to solve for y, you need to have just one y. We had two y's, and they were on the numerator and denominator, so how are we going to get them to be combined? We needed to first get rid of the whole fraction thing. Um, maybe it would have been good to cross multiply. Well, too late now. I think it would have been good, actually. Because <laughs> then you would have really gotten rid of all those fractions, and these wouldn't be fractions. So go back and do that. Um, y equals that everything of that monomial over x. Y equals everything over x. Let's just do it. Let's do it. It's the same thing. All right, cross-multiplying. So x times y, and then y plus 1 times c. I can't believe I, I had doubt that cross multiplying wouldn't be the best way to do it. Always the best way to do it if you can, right? Still going to do a lot of the same thing. So we're still distributing the C. We're still going to subtract over. The only difference is we don't have, to, we don't have fractions everywhere, which makes everybody a little more calm, right? Still going to factor the Y off. And finally, we will divide. By x minus c to get rid of that. There's definitely some connection between this finished rational and the original one here. And I studied it before, and you know, these are they're definitely related. Where you don't have to go through all that work if you can find that shortcut, but it's not that obvious of a shortcut. So. so that's really not that complicated of a function after all that, huh? Do we have initial conditions? No. There were none given for this problem. But it looks like here it would be better to wait until you get this to actually use those initial conditions. This is a lot easier to work with, but you could have done it earlier. Maybe all this would be easier if C was a number like 2 or something. So, you know, that's, that's preference. So you got to notice that steps 3 and 4 really could be switched in their order. Uh, so we'll just say none, none given. And interval validity here. So what number is no good for x? C, c right? Uh, so that divides things up into greater than c and less than c. So depending on the initial condition, if there was one, you would pick negative infinity to C, or C to infinity. We haven't done a check with these yet. Uh, but remember, that validation that we learned the first week, that, that's universal. So you should be able to take this and take derivatives and it should actually work out. Let's go ahead and do that since we haven't done that in a while. This really isn't bad to take a derivative of, is it? Are you going to put that into a slope field? No. No, I just want to do the old-fashioned by hand checking. What's the derivative of this thing? Just think of that C as being there. And then maybe think of it like that. Does that help? Do you all do that kind of thing? Switch it to a negative one exponent to use the power rule? I find sometimes that's more helpful. Negative. 
So it'll be, right, negative c over x minus c squared. Is that what you said? That looks good, right? So there's the derivative. Uh, what's the original differential equation? Let's put this right here. And then we need this, the original function, to go right here. Zero, is it? So to clean it up a little, uh, we do have a negative and we have a cx over x minus c squared, right? We have a c squared over x minus c squared. And then we have a c over x minus c. So we need to get a common denominator. And the one that's not matching up is this third one. So to make that match up, we're going to multiply the top and bottom by x minus c. make a common denominator with any fraction using multiply the same thing on the top and bottom. I'm going to write this as x minus c squared now since that's the way the other ones are written. And now the numerator should add to zero. Is that more obvious? Yep. Yes. So we've got a negative cx and a positive cx and we've got a c squared and a negative c squared. 